Cities worldwide are beginning to take a proactive approach to the emerging threat of extreme heat, creating new roles to deal specifically with rising temperatures. Phoenix is one of the fastest warming cities in the country, and it recently set up this office, an office of heat response and mitigation to address it. I'm now joined by Mayor Kate Gallego of Phoenix, Arizona, who spearhe spearheaded these efforts, and the person she picked to lead the office, David Hondula, director of Phoenix's Office of Heat Response and Mitigation. He spent more than a decade as a climate and health scientist working to understand the risk associated with extreme heat. Thanks so much for joining me. Mayor Gallego, it's always great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us again. Well, look, I mean, I am interested in, uh, you know, how you're going to grade uh, uh, your new director of heat in terms of whether he succeeds or fails. You know, I mean, you've identified a key moment. You've now uh, paid for a person to come do it. What, tell us what the challenge is and tell us what your hopes are uh, for your director who's sitting next to you on the screen. We want to make sure Phoenix is leading the way in innovation and in heat. Heat fell in many different areas in the city and there was no one with clear responsibility. So we wanted to make sure we could bust through silos at cities and really change how we look at the built environment. Can we create buildings, landscapes that are more heat friendly, meaning help cool our communities? Uh, did we use the most innovative materials? Dr. Handula actually worked with us at Arizona State University before he came in and joined City Hall and he helped us with a cool pavement project. We have the largest in the country. It is a lighter colored coating on our city streets that reduces the temperature 10 to 12 degrees. So that's a change our residents can feel. Uh, people, particularly in the summer in Phoenix, are always asking elected officials, what are you going to do about the heat? And Dr. Handela's work is our answer to that question. Well, you, I mean, I, was, I, I like your tweets, and you've got this one tweet about, I don't know if I'm saying it right, the, it's ASU Engineering Innovation Marty the Robot tracking temperature impacts, and it's kind of doing that along with, uh, you know, the, the cool pavement project. What, what is Marty the Robot doing? Mayor? So the, the robot uh, goes out and does sensing at sort of the level a human would be walking at as well as ground level. Uh, when I say it reduces heat 10 to 12 degrees, we don't necessarily need all residents out in the middle of the streets touching them. So we put Marty to work doing that. But we want to have in research from different neighborhoods. So mm. how does it um, impact heat in our downtown versus a more suburban pattern? Right. Uh, one of our favorite projects is with our public housing, and we're trying to have cool investments in our public housing so that equity is also part of the conversation. Well, thank so Marty's, you. Marty's the brains behind the, the data. Excellent. Well, David um, Hondula, so I mean, congratulations, because I understand you just took this job starting in October. So, you know, this is a new position for you. And, and I'm interested in, you know, I'm always interested in show and tell, right? So we're talking to Phoenix. We're walking what, what you and the mayor are doing. And I know that this would be an unfair question, but as you get into this and you begin wrestling with this question of extreme heat, which is getting worse um, in Phoenix, are there, are there practices, best and promising practices early on you see that can be replicated in other cities that you're beginning to think about doing in Phoenix? Um, uh, thanks, Steve, for, for having us on. And, and absolutely, you're right. We're 10 weeks on to the job now. And well, what's been really impressive about the first 10 weeks is learning about all the great ideas and initiatives already underway in City Hall. As the mayor described, there's been a lot of activity in Phoenix. Phoenix has been a national leader in the heat response and mitigation conversation for many years, but understanding how to connect and synergize and multiply those efforts is really one of our early early tasks. I think one of the exciting tangible uh, opportunities, the bits of low hanging fruit is to accelerate what we're doing on the heat response front with our cooling center network, understanding barriers for different types of people with different life circumstances, being able to access public cooled space. There's been tremendous movement on that front here over the past few years, including necessary innovation during the pandemic. And we are, are very interested to share what we've learned with the broader national and international community. You know, you, one of the things that you tweeted in July, so before you joined this, is, is that you were critiquing a New York Times article for not talking about urbanization itself as a driver um, of climate change. And it's really interesting. It, made, it, it, made, it kind of triggered my thinking about, you know, urbanization is here. It's real. You, you see that. But are, are there, are there climate-friendly urbanization strategies that we need to begin thinking about? Is that, is that, is that framed right? 
Yeah, absolutely, Stephen. Thanks for uh, thanks for the homework on the social media feed uh, and for raising that important issue. As, as we look at the historical climatological record for major cities, urbanization has been the dominant driver of climate change from past to present. As we move forward, of course, we need to have our attention on both global scale processes and urbanization. But in our, our role and function at City Hall, it's really important to understand how consequential urbanization is because to some extent, we have our hand on the dial of how urbanization will proceed moving forward. And our colleagues who run climate simulations have really encouraging news for us that if we deploy widespread cooling strategies, cooling technologies like Mayor described, if we continue to build and adapt our city to be more heat ready, the future in Phoenix could be cooler than it is today, even with continued global warming. So the answer is absolutely right. If we pay attention to the design strategies, if we're smart about the place where we are and other cities can do the same, we can really take a lot of the, the edge off of the warming that's projected for cities all across the world. That's really cool. Mayor Gallego, um, I spent a lot of yesterday talking to folks about the infrastructure bill that, that met I, the administrator of the National Transportation uh, uh, Authority and, you know, mayor of Baltimore and others about what's coming down the pike. But, you know, you just got back from COP26. You're going to have money that, that, that flows your way. And I'm really interested in my future choices. And, and one of the comments that came back and said, if we just do like for like and replacing infrastructure of the old with the, the similar, then we are missing a once in a generation opportunity to leapfrog forward into smarter, cleaner, better sensors and things so that, 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 that implies conservation. And I just love to get a sense, have our audience get a sense from you about how you think about the responsibilities of directing that money and what your requirements are gonna be for those that receive these grants and monies in, in Phoenix? One of the programs that's very exciting in the Infrastructure and Jobs Act is energy efficiency and conservation block grants. Hmm. They will allow each city to decide what makes sense locally. So what makes sense for me in Phoenix is very different when the mayor of Chicago might need to fight climate change. But for us in Phoenix, I suspect we'll put heat at the forefront of those innovations and really try to work with our university partners to, to see how we can make life more comfortable for our residents. But we're also really looking at transforming the economy of Phoenix in partnership with the federal government. Phoenix and the greater Phoenix area is often called the Electric Valley. We believe that vehicle electrification will be able to move a generation forward thanks to the investments in the Infrastructure and Jobs Act. So not directly related to heat except for around through climate change, but just the types of impacts on this economy are so exciting for us with the bill. What, what is, Mayor, what is the water situation like there? Um, and, and what I mean is, you know, one of the things I was reading from what David uh, is trying to put in place are greater, you know, tree canopies. And, you know, I remember at Davos, Mark Benioff of Salesforce helped launch this trillion tree initiative so that the world plants a trillion trees and, you know, takes a, a, a different sex of it. So it just reminded me of that. I don't know if Phoenix is part of it, but, you know, when you think of tree canopies, you think about sustainability, and then you think about water water, um, all of this is tied together in an ecosystem. How, do, how does water management come into some of your sustainability aspirations? We are a desert city and we remember that every day. Prior to running for office, I actually worked professionally in water management and I think that's part of the reason the citizens of Phoenix elected me to this job. We take our water supply very seriously. Out west, the joke is uh, whiskey is for drinking and water is for fighting. <laughs> but we're hoping to work more collaboratively now. And Phoenix has worked very hard to diversify our water supply so that we have uh, different partnerships, different rivers and other water sources. And we prepare for drought because we know it is coming. Uh, we are investing heavily in planting trees, but we're looking at native drought tolerant species that make sense in our local ecosystem. They do use some water, but we've really looked at the costs and benefits and found that having a more green, lush canopy reduces heat and uh, moves the entire system in, in the right direction. Salesforce has been a strong leader. Uh, they are partners with American Forests, a great nonprofit, and are working. we are working with them through American Forests to plant trees in Phoenix. So it, one of the exciting things at, at um, Glasgow was so many corporate partners wanted to step up hmm. and work with cities. They know we're, we're getting things done out here and they were willing 
to invest alongside us. And David, you know, um, I, and David actually tweeted this this line. I like, trees are critical urban infrastructure. I like that line. It's a, it'd be a good bumper sticker. Um, maybe we should make bumper stickers. A good digital uh, digital thing. But but. Um, you know, I think another dimension, I don't know how to ask this, David, but, you know, the politics are for the mayor. You're, you know, functioning an important role. But I can't imagine that at some level you're not controversial with some people. I mean, you, the country is divided a lot on these issues. And one of the dividing lines, unfortunately, is about the environment. It's one the steps we take. And I'm wondering how... What are the best strategies you've found to win over people who have been skeptical of, of the regulations, the investment, you know, the, the stewardship of the environment, so that it's not just one half of the room applauding, that you're able to bring other people along? Does that make sense? Uh, absolutely, Steve. It's a great question. And we're fortunate working in the urban heat domain uh, in our past research projects, we've talked to people across the political spectrum. Uh, we'll be in, in their home, and regardless of where they fall on the political scale, folks have lived here for a long time. Tell us about how much hotter it is in Phoenix than it used to be. They remember cool nights when they were children running barefoot across, across the fields. And that doesn't seem to be as divisive of a political issue as the conversation around global scale climate change. This focus on what's happening locally seems to be a, a unifying force. But uh, to, to overcome these barriers about uh, different interests and how it will be pulled in different directions, we have to be in regular conversation with the community in, in every city council district uh, just to appreciate and understand what these different priorities are. In the absence of a, a heat office in the past, I don't know that all of these trade-offs and competing interests are very well understood comprehensively across City Hall. Uh, so that's certainly some of the early homework for me. And and you're right, there, there are some, some tensions out there. Uh, one of them that comes to mind off the, the top of my head is how we're thinking about roadways and right-of-way opportunities that could be created for a tree planting, but also having a, a hardy roadway network makes it very convenient to get around this, this city. Mayor Gallego, um, I think the last time we talked, I may be wrong on this, but was, you know, I'm a huge fan of the Conference of U.S. Mayors, and there's always cool and interesting things that mayors are sharing with each other. You know, my notes uh, say that you co-chair the Climate Mayors Group, and I guess what I'm interested in in this is you're at the forefront of this. What are you seeing as some of the other strategies elsewhere among your colleagues that are mayors as they try to wrestle this down? You know, I sometimes wonder, you know, does, you're, you're all very innovative. In fact, I, I sort of sit here in Washington, D.C. at the federal level and wish we were more like mayors because you're, you're solving problems. But I guess the question is, when you kind of look at other cities, Francis Suarez in Miami or other places, do you see other practices that have helped inform what you're doing, or do you see them uh, trying to replicate some of what you're doing? We all share and collaborate. So Francis Suarez also has someone working on heat. His is a little bit different. It's a philanthropic initiative, but we talk about resilience a lot and, and how you can prepare in those areas. We also trade information on technology regularly. So it turns out Boise, Idaho is leading on electrifying their fleet for solid waste. And then you look um, green airports and I'm learning a lot from what the Los Angeles area is doing. So there is a little bit of competition. Uh, Houston laid out a, a higher number of trees they were going to plant and, and we took note of that and we're going to try to be more ambitious. So I think we, we trade success stories, but but also we, we benchmark against each other. Um, it's been amazing to see what some cities are doing with grid uh, modernization and can you turn your car batteries into part of the electricity supply. So you're gonna see a lot of innovative projects from all over the country. And uh, it'll be ex a, a period I think of profound leaps in technology in the United States, which is where we are used to being. Well, I, I really am excited by David Hondula's work and the, your, your work, uh, Mayor, in you know, looking at this. I get to Phoenix a lot. I'm going to drop in on you uh, one day and say, hey, you know, you know, show me some of the cool things you're doing. Uh, and I will invite you back now and say, let's come back in a year and sort of look at some of other, uh, other elements you've deployed. So thank you so much for joining us. Kate Gallego, Mayor of Phoenix, Arizona, and David Hondula, Director of the Office of Heat Response and Mitigation for Phoenix. Really fascinating. Thanks so much. Thank you, Steve.